My name is Mike Lilly. I'm the principal of Abington Heights Middle School. It's a five through eight middle school with 1,100 students. So there's a lot of kids there. This is Mr. Antonetti. He's the assistant principal of the middle school. And our first 10 minutes of the program is going to be dedicated to social equity. And that's really what we want to do and highlight for you for the first 10 minutes. The second half of the presentation, what we'd like to do is then mix it up a little bit, um, do some question and answer, and highlight some of the things about our school that we think are pretty special in the areas of academic excellence, developmental responsiveness, and organizational structures. And we'll try to run in some videos, some cool things that I think we take to highlight some of those examples. Um, welcome. Uh, we have some handouts for you here. As we present, I gave you copies of the PowerPoint slides for notes and information. Some of them are hard to read, or we wanted to expand on that. So there's this big packet that has documents, and I'll refer to them throughout the presentation. That way you don't have to write down everything. It's all here where we provide, uh, I think, documents that you find very interesting. Okay, if you take a look at this slide right here, um, you can read it for yourself. This is kind of the quote that we put together for our school. What I want you to just take a look at is, you know, a lot of schools put a lot of quotes together. Here's the meaning that we find within this slide. We connect that collaborative word, collaboration, and we connect it, if you don't want to draw an arrow in your mind or in your head, to high quality teaching and a high quality education. We kind of take the approach that if you have true conversation, and what does that look like? It's very hard, it's very difficult at times to have that true conversation. But have that true conversation about students, about staff, about expectation, and about your program. If you truly have those conversations and you're willing to work through that struggle, you're going to get a high quality education. We believe that rolls in nicely to what the kids end up getting, which is a great education. If you take a look at the next slide, really we focus the first 10 minutes on social equity on these areas, high quality teaching, resources, learning opportunities, and support. So we're gonna go on to the next slide now. Just before you even read it, I just kind of want you to close your eyes for a second, and I want you to think about what high quality teaching looks like. Get it in your mind, and I, pretend money is not an option. Pretend that um, everything that you know about education is not an option with high quality teaching. If you have it in your mind, I want you to try to open your eyes up now and take a look at that slide. At Abington Heights Middle School, what's wonderful for us is we take our middle school philosophy and we make that first. And when you come in and you interview with us or we have an opening, you must fall into that closed eyes, what does a high quality teacher look like? How do they operate? How do they act? You need to almost, your aura has to be about kids first. If you don't come across as kids first, if your answers don't include kids, it's going to stick out to us when we're interviewing you. So when we hire, we're looking for the highest quality teacher. You don't have to be the smartest teacher, you don't have to go to the best school, but if you bring all of that together into a package, that's high quality teaching. It reflects those things. We want you to challenge us as administration. Just because we're administrators doesn't mean we know everything. We want you to challenge us, we want you to be progressive in your thinking. If you have ideas, if you have goals, if you have ways to expand the curriculum, we're going to allow you to have that conversation with us. And if it fits into our program and our philosophy, we're going to allow it to happen. Mr. Ely mentioned the teachers as a great resource. Uh, we also know how students are a great resource. But in terms of the things that we have put together the last few years, these are, this is a, a fairly comprehensive list of some of the things we're very proud of in our school um, with technology. Uh, we went from the old wood shop to a Project Lead the Way STEM-based pre-engineering program that feeds into the high school. Uh, one of our, our gems in the school is our TV studio with high-tech equipment. We do closed captioning programming in the school. It's run by kids. Kids are the news anchors, the producers, the teleprompters. They run the equipment. And the, the platform that they use is very similar to what you find an actual TV station. And these are 10, 11, 12 year old kids running the show. So it's a fantastic thing that we do for communication, uh, to talk about awareness in the school. And it attracts uh, a whole hodgepodge of different kinds of kids that find something in common. So that's something we're really proud of. And for me, it's one of the most exciting things we have going on in the building. And largely because it's, it's technology and it's kid centered, and the two go together naturally. Our after school program is probably among the most comprehensive in the state. I would argue maybe the most comprehensive in the state. 
We have an average of over 30 to 40 different after school activities offered three times a year. Uh, and we try to tap in kids' interests and faculty interests. One of our teachers is a professional juggler. So he has a juggling after school activity. And when kids have new interests, new ideas, they come see me or Mr. Ilya. If we can find enough kids and a teacher to run it, we run it. So it's always evolving. Um, and we also tap into parents who have great talents. Two of our parents are mathematics professors at local universities. They run the math counts and the mathematics competitions with our kids, and they are top performers at the regional and state levels. So it's also a great way to bring in parents to participate within the school. We, our specials program, we expose kids to a whole range of options from obviously all the special departments, technology, music, art, family concern sciences, physical and health education. And we have two transition programs that we coordinate with the elementary schools and with the high school. And a lot of it is student run. So when kids come to learn about the middle school, it's kids presenting to them. And then our eighth graders go to the high school and they are mentored by ninth graders. Ninth graders and high school students come to the middle school and build that bridge between the buildings. And more than anything, we look at kids to set the, set the tone for the school. So really, everything we do is to mold the students so that they can be student leaders. Uh, and we have uh, eighth graders connecting with fifth graders for our anti-bullying program. So the eighth graders are teaching the little ones about it. It breaks that intimidation, and it really uh, it builds a nice culture to the school. Just to kind of piggyback off the transition program, it's become so extensive that every eighth grade student that goes into the high school gets a mentor. And they actually take that eighth grade student and they put their locker, that actually when they become a ninth grader, they put their locker next to their mentor. That's incredible. I mean, that's 250 kids that we send up there, 260, 270 kids, that actually line up their locker. That's how dedicated we are to making sure they feel safe and comfortable. That is something that's evolved over time that we're extremely proud of. And I think it's been um, one of those things that kids really can kind of let their guard down and feel really comfortable about going to high school. And then we got some new Chromebooks for 7th and 8th grade social studies. And at first there was a lot of growing pains, it wasn't working, teachers were frustrated. Uh, sometimes they got ugly. And then they started working. And this is a picture of the kids just two weeks ago. And the teacher is a great teacher already. There's not a lot she could do to really, you know, she can grow and become better, but really she's a top-notch teacher. She pulled me aside with a look of enthusiasm and said, the Chromebooks are changing how I teach. And I, I had, you know, goosebumps because she was so excited. And I said, tell me how it changed your classroom. She said, it's more interactive, it's more student-centered, it's more engaging to the kids. When the kids homesick, they can access all the work through their Google account. Uh, things that used to be teacher-centered at the board, the kids can do right on the laptop. So all the things you hear, the promise of technology, we didn't see it at first, and slowly it's been evolving. And really, the teachers are pushing me and Mr. Delia to open up more opportunities with technology. And we want to make sure that it works for them, that it's safe for kids, but really it's, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful thing. And they are collaborating on ideas on how to use these Chromebooks in their social studies classrooms. When we talk about our highest quality resource, one of the things, our main thing that we focus on are our kids. Just want to set the stage for this child that you're going to be seeing. This child's name is Jerome. Jerome uh, is hearing impaired. And you're not. He uh, attends half day at uh, Scranton School for the Deaf and half day at Abington Heights. So he does his uh, math and science instruction with us, half day in language arts. He has grown so fond of our school and what he does every day at the school and how he feels that he's advocating for himself. He actually called a meeting with myself and Mr. Antonetti and advocated with his interpreter about why he wants to come to Abington Lakes Middle School full time. And we were actively working on putting an interpreter in place full time and working the paperwork out so he could come to us. So we were so proud of him, we actually asked him if we could um, take him so you guys could check out Jerome in action, and he is a fifth grade student and I thought it would be interesting to see. I really love Abington Heights Middle School because I'm treated fairly and everyone's so nice to me. I don't have to worry about being bullied. I'm also learning a lot. I feel excited about what I'm learning. 
I would love to keep coming here to this school all day because I'm learning so much. And I really like my teachers. They're very helpful. And I also love my favorite classes are the special classes because I learn a lot in those classes. And I feel that Abington Heights has really welcomed me. Uh, I just thought that'd be pretty cool for you to see. Uh, Jerome is one of our most popular fifth grade students. Um, and it's because he, he loves being in that school. He basically falls into the mold of what we're looking for for a student. A kid that's putting a lot of effort, trying real hard, being a good citizen and a good student. Uh, this is just a slide of, uh, we actually had the First Lady Corbett visit Abington Heights Middle School. And I just thought it'd be a nice, uh, a little showcase. We got to show her around the school um, and presented her our program and um, I think she had a terrific visit when she came in. She was working on an initiative to prevent the uh, school dropout and through the research she found that after school programs are a key component of that. So what you're seeing here is her visiting the after school program. Up there on the top left is kids painting a mural by the music department and the kids actually are decorating the entire school with murals that go with different themes. And this is the TV studio that we talked about. And as you can see, every kid there has a role, and they have a schedule, and they do have a faculty advisor, but they kind of coordinate the whole show. Okay, just continuing with social equity, um, we're gonna kind of run through this quickly. You can take a look at this uh, for yourself, but basically, we try to set up our classrooms. Everything is heterogeneously grouped. Um, we take an extensive amount of time in grades 5, 6, 7, and 8 to make sure we're mixing ability levels in that class, which sets up for differentiation opportunities. We do level in 7th and 8th grade for, um, for math, but most every other class that we have is heterogeneously grouped. We do have advancement in math, like I said, and we have an honor Spanish in the 8th grade. Uh, we really focus on differentiation at our school. It's, co it's constant conversation, it's constant revisiting the lesson plans, how we can do things differently, and really make improvements. Um, we promote basically using our entire campus. We have a beautiful campus, we actually have a pond on campus. We have teachers teaching in the hallways, um, through the cafeteria, using outside, using the pond, doing experiments. Um, it's really terrific. Basically, our 5 through 8 schedule is set up where teachers can flex their time. I don't dictate anything from the office. It's very decentralized. They let me know what they're doing, and I trust them to make those decisions. I know what their academic time looks like, and I trust that they're going to uh, balance that out. 